Hello, Dominic Herbst here with Restoring Relationships, uh, which is the core or subsidiary of Bethesda Family Services Foundation. And today we're going to talk about around Calvary or through Calvary. The choice is yours. And the reason we're talking about that is we have a number of coming events and we're also checking out some microphone things here and I just got the go ahead that it seems to be coming through and looking forward to walk through this with you right now. Um, the Through Calvary, now I have three prepositions that has to do with the greatest of all sacrifices on Calvary's hill by the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Back in 1976, I was headed to a graveyard or a prison, and the Holy Spirit drew me to Calvary. I didn't know it then, but it was ultimately to Christ and for the sacrifice of sin at Calvary, and I needed my sin cleansed by the blood of Christ that was poured out on Calvary's hill. And when I came to Calvary and surrendered to him, I had an appetite to learn more of him, to learn what my purpose was, my destiny, the perfect plan of God that was operating through me, to know and understand what my gifts were in the Holy Spirit, all things that I really didn't know anything about. Because although I was raised in a religion, I wasn't um, made uh, known to a relationship, a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ. So, After coming to Calvary and surrendering to Christ, I went around Calvary, really good place to be, to learn of him, to go to a church, to begin to come together. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together with the believers so that we can grow, we can pour into one another, we can nurture each other, disciple one another. And the appetite of the truth, the word, praise, worship, and then also what God has called each one of us to do. But for 12 years, after 1976, and I met my wife uh, uh, two years later, we were married in 1979, and what began to manifest through me was all kinds of pain, anger, bitterness, even rage. I would have depression where I would be imploding pain, and then I would be exploding pain. I was causing pain with anyone around me, my wife and then then my two small children uh, that were born 80 and 84. Uh, And that experience of interacting with the three closest people in my lives Uh, were so painful for them. My pain had nowhere to go, so it splashed out on them. It's 100% my fault, my accountability. And this is while I was a believer in Christ. My spirit was regenerated by the cleansing blood of Christ. And in the cleansing of my spirit, what began to emerge was the pain in my soul. I want you to understand, according to the Scriptures, His Spirit, that is His Holy Spirit, the Lord God, bears witness with my spirit that I am His child, Romans 8, 16. Only God can bear witness with you that you are His child. You can go to ask somebody, you can have somebody maybe confer on you, but it will not be eternal until the Holy Spirit himself is bearing witness with your human spirit, cleansing you from sin. And I knew there was a transformation in me. I had nothing to do with it except surrendering up to the Lord. And those 12 years, what was emerging was all this pain in my soul from a child. And I know many people like to say, leave that in the past, that's in the past. No, the events are in the past that impacted the pain. But the impact of the pain is in me in the well beyond the past situation of the experience. Meaning this, that your soul actually feels pain today from something that may have happened decades ago. Now, it's okay if you own the pain. But if the pain owns you, you're not just wounded, you are infected. And in infection, it debilitates us. We have to find ways to medicate that infection. And then the ways we medicate it are not godly ways. 
only Christ, who is also referred to as our great physician, who has cleansed our spirit from trespasses and sin, that same Christ is the one who restoreth my soul. So regeneration of spirit is being born again by the finished work of Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Okay, then the soul begins to emerge and the enemy, he can aggravate us through the pain that is concealed, which is why you've probably heard me say pain concealed is pain unhealed. That pain has to be opened up to a physician. It's bigger than us, especially when we become infected with it. And you might say, I don't get the difference of the wound infection. Well, you can have many wounds, oftentimes superficial, scratches, um, abrasions, um, bruises, and you don't need any attention. They'll just heal on their own. They're superficial. They don't go deep. Maybe they're, and then they don't get infected. It's always good to put a disinfectant on them. But if you have a wound that goes deep into your soul, and it is not a cleansed wound, meaning that we have forgiven the person who delivered the wound, that wound will become infected. Absolutely. Once it's infected, that wound will debilitate me, govern me, own me in ways that I never imagined. So be very, very careful because everyone, every believer has had infected wounds. You might say, no, I never have because I always forgive. There's not a believer on this side of heaven that hasn't been wounded at a level where they delayed in their forgiveness. Any delay of forgiving the offender puts me at risk for having a bitter heart toward them. This is why it says to the believing church at Ephesus in Ephesians 4.26, it says, be angry and sin not. Now we know biblical anger is without sin. But do not let the sun go down upon your wrath. Be careful because I own the anger. The wrath owns me. I control the anger. The wrath controls me. And once I'm in wrath, I am double-minded. As James said, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. My heart is now driving more of my life, and it does say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. As a man thinks in his heart, that's who he is. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So think about that. Those are all scripts of the heart. The heart is like the hard drive of the computer. It's got everything, every thought, every intention, every emotion, every experience in your life is imprinted on the hard drive of your heart. You say, no, 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 it's the brain. The brain is like the screen on the computer. We bring up to the mind what is in the heart. There is reasoning that occurs in the mind, but this is where the enemy spirits have access to the believer, his mind. Be careful. This is why it says, be careful the stronghold in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against God, bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought this is where the enemy has access. Way, way, way too much access. Once he gets into your thinking, he gets into, you know, as we call it stink and think, and you've heard that, and it begins to steer you into a way away from truth, away from the Lord, away from obedience. Once you go there, the enemy has a field day. You can literally be walking around Calvary as a believer in Christ, and the devils are there. Oh, they were there when he was crucified. They were part of the crucifixion. And it says in the scriptures, had this, the... Uh, uh, the the, the uh, darkness of this world, there's a term for the demonic activity, known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They were duped. They wanted him crucified, not knowing it became the very basis for defeating them. Because in the crucifixion, followed by the resurrection, sin, Satan, and death were all destroyed. We're all overcome. Sin, the power of sin no longer has to reign in the believer. We still sin, but we don't have to be governed by it as a person without Christ. Satan, oh yeah, he's far more powerful than we are, and so are all the fallen, the, the spirits, the enemy spirits. But 
We are, the Spirit of the Lord is far more powerful than them. Greater is he that is in me, that is the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world. And death no longer has the power to keep us eternally from God in heaven. We have heaven restored, all of that. And so here we are. So if we're around Calvary, what the enemy does not want you and I to do as believers, he doesn't want us to go through Calvary. Now, you know what that means? That means if you're engaged in counseling, he will let you do the devil's dance. Now, I call it dancing with the devil, and the devil always leads. But you don't see sometimes that you're being influenced by the enemy when you're in counseling with a very well-meaning Christian counselor. I was that guy for a lot of years, and I would give truth. That's a good thing. And the enemy will even allow good things to go forth as long as he can keep you and I from the God thing. And I have a whole video on that that goes into greater detail. You might say, what do you mean? If it's a good thing, it's not a bad thing. Right. But if you and I need the power of the living God to be set free, the good thing isn't going to be enough. The good thing, if it keeps us from being fully set free through the power of Jesus Christ in his resurrection, then... It's all for naught because we're learning, we're open to the truth, we're receiving the truth, but we're not walking in it. We're not obeying it. James said, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Through Calvary is doing. Around Calvary is hearing. Good place to be. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to hear so that we understand why we do. But the enemy will let you and I do a whole lot of hearing for a whole lot of years and decades in our life, but he'll do everything he can to keep us from doing. And that's walking in that truth, which is what we refer to as walking through Calvary. Three prepositions. To Calvary, I surrender to Christ, born again, all by the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I add nothing to his blood and can take nothing from it. Why? It's perfect. I must receive it and surrender into it. Around Calvary, I have an appetite now to learn of him, to know what the ministry is that he's breathing through me, to know and understand what my gifts in the Spirit are, to learn of him and his word, which is endless in what he reveals through the powerful, infinite word of God that's settled forever in heaven. All of that is a good place. Ultimately, though, the Lord wants us to go through, to, around, and through. And the devil is dancing in the invisible realm, and he's twirling us and making sure we're about ready to step through Calvary. We're about ready to act on the truth that we know to act on, and we, we don't do it. And we go from session to session to session, which I call circular reasoning. Why? Well, we're staying close to the Lord. We have prayer in the session. We open the word of God for truth. We say now we've got to learn to obey this. However, ultimately, the place of my greatest need is going to be the place of my worst pain. Once the sin condition is addressed, when I am born again, my greatest need is going to be the place of my worst pain. In that pain, the devil is, and these enemy spirits are going to keep me from knowing where my greatest pain is, because, or my worst pain. My worst pain is going to be my place of greatest need, because pain concealed is pain unhealed. Therefore, the enemy lives in the concealed pain. He does not want us to surrender it up. He does not want us to be cleansed by the physician, the great physician, who is Jesus Christ. And if he can keep us from getting cleansed, he can keep us in the bondage of the bitterness. I call it the binding and the blinding of bitterness. And that bitter root, Hebrews 12, 15, whereby springing forth, many be defiled out from the heart. And it, 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 it's like a fountain of sewage. Whatever is causing the bitterness within the heart, it's splashing out on the people we love, as it did to my wife and children. Yes, I was born again. I was blood-bought. I had the promise of eternal life. The enemy couldn't take that. So what he did was he interfered at the access that he had of this pain that I had never revealed. And so the only way to get set free of that pain is to walk through Calvary, identify with Christ's suffering. He does it all. You say, wait a minute, when I became born again, that was all taken care of. No. When you became born again, your, whole, your human spirit, which was dead in trespasses and sin, was completely made anew. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation.
Old things are passed away. All things are become new. The Holy Spirit cleansing blood of Jesus Christ comes in to our dead in sin and trespasses. Human spirit cleanses all it away. We don't add to it or take from it. For by grace, you and I are saved through faith, not of works, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. Now we're cleansed and we're ready to be used of God. Oh, but wait, my soul has concealed pain in it. Pain concealed is pain unhealed. Therefore, anything not surrendered from my soul, the enemy is allowed to torment me with. Well, guess what happens when I get tormented? I'm going to torment you. Come on closer. The tormented person is, is, is totally used by the enemy to torment everybody around him or her. And th it's not that they don't want to. They're like carriers. You know, they're like Typhoid Mary. You know, Typhoid Mary was a great cook. I use her as an analogy. She really was. But if you sat at her table, it might be your last meal. Because what she carried within her was the disease of typhoid that is, can be deadly. But that didn't take away her ability to cook, her hospitality, her desire to serve people and make them happy and, and just beautiful. But everything she touched, she contaminated. Now, that's like a believer who has an infected soul. They have a regenerated spirit that's cleansed from trespasses and sin from our lives so that we have the promise of a heaven, but our, our souls are infected. And when our souls are infected, the enemy has a pathway through our soul to disrupt us, to blind us, to bind us. There it is again, the binding and the blinding of bitterness. The blinding is 1 John 2, 9 to 11, written to the believer. If a man has hate in his heart for his brother, which is any other human being, brother, sister, could be a woman, whatever, he walks in darkness and he stumbles because the darkness, and he knows not where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Look at that. Look at that. It's amazing what that's written to the believer in the church, that he is blinded. you got to be careful as believers. We can be blinded by an area of concealed pain. That's why our place of greatest need after our sin is cleansed is the place of our worst pain because the enemy is going to set up a chapel in the place of our soul to aggravate us, torment us, and torment the people around us. And that's why until we go through Calvary, we're going to not just be carriers, we're going to be deliverers, we're going to be devourers. Not just carriers, devourers, because the devourer has too much access through us. He's using that pathway of uncleansed area. So I trust you're getting the sense and understand the battle, where it's at. Many people say it's the mind. It is, but it includes more of the mind, it includes the soul which is the intellect, the mind, the emotions, which are our feelings, and the will, which is our behavior. And you've seen our videos of, of uh, intellect, emotions, will, which is the soul. The spirit has three other faculties. I'm not here to go into them, but it is fascinating. And they correspond. Each faculty of the spirit corresponds with each faculty of the soul. It is amazing when the spirit is regenerated by the Holy Spirit, then each one of the overlays of the faculties of the spirit govern the areas of the soul. So <clears throat> when you're cleansed in spirit, but you're not submitting unto the Holy Spirit coming through your spirit, then you're going to be a soulish man or woman. And that means you're going to be pretty much governed by the pain that you've never allowed Christ to heal. All right, so as we move on here, what I want to show you here are, are uh, tell you about the prodigal spouses coming on September 29th. This has been one of the most popular ones we take people through. This is anyone who's struggling in marriage. You could be in the same house. You could be there. Nobody has left. But the prodigal nature is the nature of the heart as much as it is geographic distance away. It will also include a spouse who has left you man or woman, you know, your husband, your wife, depending on who you are that's listening. Why? Because God has clear proclamations. He has a clear plan for you left behind to know how to go into the throne room and pursue after that beloved spouse. And nobody has greater intercession on behalf of that spouse than you do. Why? You're one with them. There's nobody on the face of this earth that has a greater voice in the throne room of God than you as the spouse. Even if they've broken the covenant, you are, God, does, God didn't break it, okay, so that covenant's still intact, even if they violated it. The be, be that as it may, your intercession in the throne room 
is so powerful. Do not let Satan keep you from it. There are so many things we're going to teach you about that. And it, it doesn't end at that place. There are promises, proclamations. There are intercession. All these things. People think, well, I, just, I guess I just wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. No, he's going to activate you in the realm of the Spirit, and you're going to see kingdom authority come through. Things happen that you never imagined would happen. And you might say, yeah, but if he or she doesn't come back, what good is it? Oh, just trust God for that. He will show you, as he did with Job, things too wonderful that you knew not. So be careful in drawing erroneous conclusions on the basis of your limitations. There are unlimited opportunities in the realm of the Spirit. It is infinite. And he's going to show you things. Hang on for the ride. But you're going to have to trust him in a way that you never trusted him before. There's also a depression, anxiety, and panic Zoom encounter coming up, and that's going to begin on September 30th. So these are coming up. Tell your family, tell your friends. And the one uh, on, first of all, on September 29th, don't get confused here with the prodigal spouse that you'll be going through, and you say, well, I can't get her to be a part of it. I can't get him. No, the best way to let God change them is to begin by letting God change you. Well, they're not even around. They're not going to know it. Oh, no. You couldn't be more wrong because I was too. Whatever changes in you, they could be halfway around the world. And from the throne room, in the power of the Spirit, they will know things are happening within you that you've never told them. You may not even know where they are. Doesn't matter. Because of the oneness of the covenant, you're connected. Okay? You are connected in an eternal realm. The two shall become one flesh. They're actually one in the communion of the covenant. Do not underestimate what happens. Great testimonies on that basis that I don't have time to go through here. Just trust God on that. Don't trust me. Trust God. Okay, so the uh, 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 September 29th is the prodigal spouse, 7 to 8.30 p.m., uh, which is a uh, Tuesday, 7 to 8.30, hour and a half, interactive, and then every Tuesday for the next three after the first one, total of four, 7 to 8.30 Eastern time, so you've got to alter your time based on where you're listening from, and we will walk you through Calvary. No, we will navigate you to and let the Holy Spirit walk you through because we kind of do a handoff there. No flesh is going to glory in God's presence. He will share his glory with no man. We're fallen. So he will let us awaken you to truth and walk you to a point, walk with you in that truth. But then, ultimately, we're going to turn you over to, to the Holy Spirit. And don't worry, you'll be in the best hands you ever or never knew before in doing that. Why? We don't want it touched. We don't want it contaminated. We don't want to get in the way of it. We want to let God do the fullness of his transformation. So the, that's the prodigal spouse. No matter what the situation of the marriage is, you could be in the same room, etc. But we ask that each one of you get on a separate, if you both want to do it. In most cases, the one there's only going to be one on, even though they're married, because the other one is not cooperating. You let that to God. And you say, well, I want to try to get him on. You let that to God. He's far bigger and far more powerful than you and I could ever think or imagine. I want you to think what he says in Isaiah. Is it 59 to, my ways are not your ways. As far as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. Who shall be my counselor? You think you and I and a whole army of people are going to talk God into something that he doesn't already know, that he hasn't already thought of, thought through, seen the future. Trust him. Trust him. Surrender to him. Do what you've never done before, because in the ultimate outcome of what's happening in one of your greatest or worst seasons of pain, God will show you things, as Job said, I just said it, things too wonderful that you knew not. I know, you can't explain that, because who went through more than Job? He lost everyone, everything and everyone in his family. Even his wife cursed him, in a, in a sense. But, you know, she was hurting. I love what one pastor said. Be, be nice to Mrs. Job. Be patient. 
she lost everything too. Think about that. But she said, does thou retain thine integrity to her husband? Curse God and die. We've all been there. We've all been there where we've cast it all and said, I'm done. I'm done. Fist in the face of the living God. And he still loves us every bit as he always did. Now come and see and find him at a place so near and dear to you, so precious and tender, so fully loving, with, with uh, fully peaceful and, and, uh, and endless comfort, the God of all comfort. All of it will come to you. And it, it, you, will, you will not be able to contain it. And you will think going into this, I just want him back. I just want her back. You watch because you're going to get the Lord in a way that will transcend every loss that you've ever had or never had. And when he transcends that loss, it will be unspeakable joy and a time of indescribable pain. How does that fit? You just trust God. So the, then we have a depression, anxiety, and panic zoom. You're struggling with panic attacks, anxiety, worry, constant, where you're completely invaded by the enemy and depression, the feeling of death where you're so sunken in a place where you don't feel like you can get out. And that will be September 30th, the first one at 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Come and join us. Let us walk with you. You might say, well, how do you know about the way you're a psychologist? Yes, so what? I experienced every all this. No, I created all these messes for other people. I was the worst in creating messes and relational destruction. The fact that my wife and I are married after 41 years, oh my word. And hey, that's all to the glory of God and her, uh, her commitment. There's power in holding on. And, and I, I tell you, I didn't deserve that. Uh, I haven't deserved any of the grace that God has given me, but that's what it is. It's unmerited favor. I didn't merit the grace, but he's given it. And you know what? If we're willing to walk through this and we're willing to be obedient, God will show us wonders, again, that we never imagined. So the, the uh, prodigal spouse is September 29th, 7 to 8.30. That's the first one. And then just go each week, exact same time, Tuesday to Tuesday, four Tuesdays. And you might say, oh, I can't make one of them. Now what? It's okay. All will be recorded. And you, if, when you're signed up, will get them. There is a fee. And I want you to joy in investing in the fee into this nonprofit ministry. Why? You're seeding in and getting a benefit. The ox is worthy of his meat, the servant of his hire, seed into, and you will get six hours of intervention with both Joseph and I, yes, at a group level. And, and by so doing, we will be able to take you through the whole journey through Calvary. Not just to, not just around, but through Calvary for the restoration of our souls. Psalm 23, 3, He the Lord restoreth my soul. And as we walk through this, be, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. We're going to do the word. Aren't you tired of just hearing and hearing? And I want to do something. But you, you, the hearing gave you the want to, but Nobody gave you the how-to. We're going to disciple you through it. So this is a discipleship ministry. It's not just a counseling ministry. That's one dimension to awaken you to truth. But if we can't walk you in it, what good are we? And I'm tired of the years that I would just go around Calvary with people and awaken them to truth. It wasn't wrong. It was a good thing. But I want to be part of a God thing. That's taking you through Calvary, where then, as soon as you step into the arms of Christ for the restoration of your soul, we don't touch it. We intercede. We're right there. And we're listening and watching what God is doing because no flesh is going to glory in his presence. He will not share his glory with any man. That's what this whole thing is. And it makes sense when you think about it. So uh, one can hear truth but refuse to walk in it, and then they're never transformed. The enemy will let you go through three lifetimes if you had that many, and you'd pick up in the middle of the third lifetime, you're still going around Calvary, and you're learning more and more. If a man goes to his doctor, his oncologist, knowing he has cancer, that's devouring his body, you know, the devourer, 
And he learns all about the cancer from his doctor for week after week and then year after year, if he lasts that long, he now knows as much about what's poisoning him, what's destroying him as his doctor. But is he any more healed? No, he didn't let the great, the physician do the cleansing necessary. Jesus is called our great physician. He wants to cleanse and restore the soul. He, the Lord, restoreth my soul. He already regenerated my spirit. Now he wants to restore my soul. We've got to let him have us at the place of our greatest need. Where's that? Well, once your sin is cleansed, praise God, when you came to Christ, the place of greatest need is your worst wound. That's the place that you're paralyzed with, debilitated by. That's why you're depressed, you're anxious, you're filled with worry. That's why you have panic attacks. There is an uncleansed area of pain inside you, of a violation against you that the enemy has used as a footstool to govern you and control you in ways you never imagined you could be controlled. Here you are, set free by the blood of Christ, blood bought, born again, headed to heaven, but you're operating as if you're in bondage. You know, the eagle is a bird of freedom, and I can't go into the detail on this one, my favorite stories. Okay, Lord had downloaded to me. Well, an eagle is what a believer is because he's a bird of great freedom. He has no natural predators. Even the enemy can't touch him unless God lets him. He can't. And the, and the eagle, he eats live food. He's a bird of the light. He's not a bird, a nocturnal bird of the darkness. But this eagle, see, he, he, he's, his wings his wings are healthy, but he doesn't know it. He's standing in a chicken yard with all these unbelievers. And, he's, and he sees them strutting and clucking around. He forgets who he is. This is a person blood-bought, born again. But the infected wound of the violation against that believer, the pain of what that did to him has winged him here, and the shame has winged him here. He forgot who he was. He's a bird of freedom, but he's living in bondage. It's like the Israelites in, in the wilderness. They were meant for the promised land, and they, 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 they only could see what was right in front of them. They lost the vision of what God had before them. Why? Because they were constantly murmuring about, you left us in that bondage in Egypt for 400 years. Here they are now free, and all they can do is complain about where they were, not about rejoicing where they're going to. We lose sight of where we're headed. And we, we, we keep focused on where we came from. And that's why as soon as they crossed into the promised land, the stronghold was right there to meet them. I want you to notice, Jericho is the representation of the stronghold in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. Because God said to Joshua, don't attack, you will not prevail. I will bring the walls down. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So I want you to know that we have an opportunity here to be set free from depression, from despondency, from worry, endless worry, from torment, vexation. You want to look up a word of torment? When a person's under curse, their heart is vexed. A person who's under panic and, uh, and under anxiety, constantly anxious, they don't have to be there. I had all of that even to the panic attacks where I felt like I was losing my mind. God set me free in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're going to know and be set free. You're going to know how because we're going to walk you in the truth because a lot of times counseling would give people the want to, but it doesn't give them the how to. And what good is it if you've been awakened to the truth, but you don't know how to walk in it? These encounters, we're going to walk you in it. So please join us starting. Sign up. It's walking through Calvary. Walking through Calvary. You will find, I think it's dot com, walking through Calvary. But go to our Facebook. I mean, if you're on right now, you're on our Facebook and you will see, you will see a, a platform there of some sort that said walking through Calvary. Go there. You're going to see the free Zoom tonight. No cost to you. But when you sign up, there's going to be a charge and that charge is going to cover you to have the full online series and a journal sent to your home. That right there, if you got that right now is 150. And then the encounter where we take you through live four sessions, each subject. You can be on both. You can sign up for both. They're at different times. That's 150. Total price, 299 for everything. The six hours walking with us. And the previous ones, look at the comments. Go look at the comments of the people that have been on the previous Zooms. That's why we're doing them again. Now, one person said, I didn't get my money's worth. They all said, 
they poured way more in than what I thought. It preparing people for certification in this ministry because that will be the next step for many of you and we look forward to seeing you. I had more to share with you but my time is up and if I've forgotten something I do apologize. I'll try to revisit that but come on join us tonight for the free Zoom. This free Zoom tonight at 7 to 8 p.m. one hour. This is not part of the encounter. The encounter starts 29th and 30th. The prodigal spouse, the 29th, 7 to 8, 30. The uh, depression, anxiety, panic, worry, that starts September 30th at 1 to 2.30 p.m. in the afternoon. Again, if you say, I can't make all of them, they're recorded and they come only to you if you're signed up so that you can slow play them. And then if you have questions, you can set up a consult. There'll be other services offered for reading assignments to someone in a very small Zoom group between the weekly sessions. That will be explained at each tonight and at each Zoom session so that you know kind of what we're going to do there. Lord bless you all. Thank you for being on with us. And I'm going to just pray with you right now. Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, this invitation is for many people that are watching and others that will watch after this is uh, loaded on YouTube. We're asking that you would draw the hearts, you, the Holy Spirit. This is ultimately you knowing who needs this most and for, the, uh, for, the, for such a time as this. We ask that you would now uh, b take this message, put it out far and wide, and bring the people in for the transformation of their lives and their families. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Great to be with you. And we'll see you next Wednesday. Actually, some of you will see you tonight and maybe on the encounter. Bye-bye now.